Puh. <lacht> uh, hello everybody. Uh, this uh, countdown really made me hyperventilate. <lacht> really have to come down here for a second. Um, Before I start anything, please make sure you have your cards next to you if you want to draw a few cards because I try to make this talk a little more interactive than just uh, um, speaking at the screen all the time. For anybody who doesn't know me, my name is uh, Kirsten Buchholzer. I live and uh, work in Hamburg in Germany. I am 50% of the Mantica, which is in English the Mantics, not the Maniacs. Um, next to me sits uh, the other 50% of uh, the Mantica, uh, my husband Roy, with whom I work and live. We both uh, teach and uh, consult with tarot, astrology and oracle cards. Yes, and uh, Roy is going to be my presenter today because I thought uh, I don't rely on PowerPoint. And um, let's see how it goes. Um, before I start, also, I want to thank Kim for doing this and managing to have a tarot conference after all her problems uh, and uh, the problems in the world. Um, I'm very happy that we can still communicate with each other. And um, yeah, I'm very happy that I'm allowed to have a talk here and I hope you will like it. <laughs> um, the talk I'm going to uh, present uh, is was concepted as a, as a lunchtime talk. Uh, so some uh, food, uh, thought, uh, food for thought, uh, something to nibble. It is not a, a perfectly uh, concepted uh, talk. It's more some ideas and inspiration I had, I wanted to share with you. And perhaps after this talk, you will want to research a bit more about this, investigate this, and I hope you um, like the ideas as much as I do because I was much inspired by this and actually I found back to my roots of feminism with this, but never mind. Um, I was inspired for this talk by last year's conference in London, but also by the one we have here in Germany with the Tarot Association. In both, uh, uh, in both uh, conferences, the tower was the subject And one uh, German astrologer, Christopher Weidner, had a talk on the phallic and uh, sexual climax connotations on the tower. And I was quite inspired by this. I thought if the tower has uh, some phallic or even sexual climax connotations, then the star could perhaps have uh, the same connotations, but from the female point of view. So it might be its female counterpart. And I wanted to look more into this. I was wondering whether the star could be an image of female empowerment, uh, but also of pleasure and sexual release. So actually for me, the tower and the star, <laughs> My presenter starts now. <laughs> um, the Tower and the Star have always been one card put together. For me, it has always been um, two sides of a coin, two perspectives of the same experience. The Tower is about losing control, about uh, upheaval and avoidable accidents. The star is about the clarity we all can gain in such tower situations. For me, uh, for example, uh, I had such an experience when I was quite young. I was hit by a car when uh, I wasn't paying attention while walking over the street. And I remember I was flying through the air in slow motion. And while I was flying through the air, I had this absolute uh, feeling of clarity. I had these thoughts about what I wanted to do with my life to have a happy and uh, perfect life. And it all felt very good. So the star was to me kind of the feeling which I had while flying uh, from the tower. But when I hit the ground, I still had these images in my head, but I have to say not many of them I have uh, fulfilled until now within my life. Um, 
the test whether we can fulfill these uh, things within our lives, I think, is during the moon phase in the major arcana. But this is something uh, we will discuss in another year. Um, so let's let me let's say the tower star represents for me a shock situation. Um, it is the two cards mean being shaken into awareness. <laughs> Saucy ideas. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just reading the comments here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just like this. I, I can't help it. So. Um, in the moon stage, we find more out about this. I, I lost my track now. Uh, the, the tower and star are a shock situation. It's being shaken into awareness. And at best, these tower situations, tower star situations, I should say, bring forth enlightenment, a vision, and a liberation from perhaps material anxieties, while at worst, they can um, create a feeling of being uh, lost in reality, losing touch with reality, and even a form of escapism, escapism from reality. Woo. So my first point I want to make today is that the Star Lady represents the possibility of focus and of liberation from restrictions, perhaps, within a context of upheaval after a strong buildup of tension. And if you want to be saucy, you can already connect this to some sexual ideas. Um, right now, I don't want to be I want you to be saucy, but perhaps um, I want you to take your cards. I'm working today with a great modern witch tarot, which I really, really love. Um, I was thinking when I was writing this uh, down here that uh, we are all actually probably people have to, um, mentioned this already in a total tower star um, situation right now due to Corona. Um, perhaps the best I think we can do right now to draw a card is to um, think about our own situation in this Corona times right now and draw one which represents most our tower star shock release feeling. So if you want to do this, I'm going to do this right now and give you the time to do the same. Perhaps if you want to have a surprise, don't turn it around right now. But of course, you can do this if you feel like it. I will keep my surprise. So the first card out of four is what is my tower star situation in the present times. Something else is important for my musings on the star and its implication. Um, Rachel Pollack, I think in her book, Tarot Wisdoms, pointed out that the tower is a very important card regarding masculine and female energies and their exchange. She points out that in the lovers and in the devil, <laughs> we are here in a juxtaposition <laughs> stage as well, um, Eve, or the woman, is always on the left-hand side, while Adam, or the man, is always on the right-hand side. Later, uh, in the tower, we have then, we need the tower now, <laughs> Later in the tower, we have an exchange of these energies because uh, this looks more like a man, she looks more like a woman, so the sides are exchanged. And if we then look at judgment, judgment, then we see that the woman, uh, it's really difficult, the woman is on the right side and the man on the left-hand side, and in the middle is the child. So there has happened an exchange of male, masculine, and uh, feminine energies. 
if you once more again look at the lovers, we can see this mountain in between the two um, protagonists. And I was wondering, because uh, um, in the Rider Waite deck, Rider Waite Smith deck, the um, mountain appears quite frequently also in Judgment. Um, is this a foreshadowing of the tower experience and the rupture we they have in the tower. After all, the tower is also an image of the fall from paradise, in my opinion. Well, something else I also find interesting in this regard, uh, regarding my thoughts, is that um, before the tower, we have quite a lot of uh, cards which are describing uh, the material experience in the world, the way we go out into the world in order to um, yeah, manifest something. And these are usually represented by strong masculine protagonists, something like uh, the fool, the magician, the emperor, the chariot, uh, the hermit, or even the hanged man. But uh, afterwards, after the tower, there are more spiritual issues um, and they are more um, portray portrayed by feminine uh, protagonists, such as the star, perhaps even the moon uh, and definitely the world. I don't want to say that uh, before the tower, there are no strong female characters. Of course, there are, but the majority is masculine and afterwards is feminine. And uh, if you look, for example, at the Röhrich deck, that was a very German the, <laughs> at the Röhrich deck, we see here the emperor and the star card. And as you can see, they are portrayed quite similar. So um, they have all this, both this blue tint and they uh, seem to be looking at each other, but not really. And while the emperor is shown in a very royal, um, perhaps even patriarchal um, way. The star is looking uh, very spiritual and there seems to be an exchange of energies within these, uh, within these two, as if uh, the male and female energies unite in order to create something spiritual. So I wonder, is the tarot at all, the major arcana at all, about tuning down masculine energies within you and, and with each and everybody of us and bringing forth more feminine energies within us. That the tower energy, the tower experience, or should I say that tower star experience has some things to do with the destruction of patriarchal society, patriarchal beliefs, uh, is hinted at, in my opinion, uh, within the numerology of the tarot. So we have the number four for the emperor. Um, and Sorry. Um, yeah. Before before I start, um, I'm just reading what de what the deck was. It's called the Röhrig deck. R O uh, R O E H R I G. It's very beautiful. We both love it a lot. Um, coming back to what I was saying um, after that, the tower experience um, is uh, we can reflect back to the emperor through numerology. So. The number of uh, the emperor is four. Can you hold up the card, please? Thank you. And the number of the tower is 16. So four times four is 16. And to me, the tower has always represented condensed material, imperial power. Um, the card is not dark because it's evil or frightening, but because the energy, the material energy is so dense that there needs to, uh, the, uh, that the uh, release needs to be happening. And this is exactly happening in the tower. The crown, the same crown on the card on the tower as on the emperor 
I'm only speaking of the Rider Waite Smith deck, of course, right now. This, the crown is hit by the lightning from the tower and the energy is released in what way ever. Um, and uh, there is a necessity. Uh, it happens because there was a necessity to breathe more freely in this condensed material energy and create more space. And this is why the tower is tumbling. And again, we can bring this back to our present corona situation. But of course, what I was thinking about before, we can put this very good into sexual contexts and climax. Now, even though the tower is a phallic symbol, has been a phallic symbol for ages, and uh, is connected to the emperor and to male experiences, it is uh, interesting that generally in fairy tales, in myth and uh, old stories, legends, the inhabitant of a tower is usually female. It's either a female heroine in distress or it is uh, an old witch living in the tower. For example, in Rapunzel, I guess it's the same name in uh, England than in Germany. Rapunzel is living in the tower. She's forced to live in this tower uh, by a witch, a, a, a female witch. And uh, there is her long hair, which is, of course, again, a very erotic connotation. Then we have Sleeping Beauty, who finds uh, the bad witch sitting in the tower high in the castle and she is uh, using um, she's uh, she's weaving a spindle oh i didn't look up the word for a spindle is it a spindle thing she's weaving with um she's sitting in the tower um, working with her uh, spindle uh, the witch and uh, then Don Röschen, uh, Sleeping Beauty, falls asleep in the tower. So we have again this uh, image of the heroine, the witch in the tower. Then also men can trap heroines in towers. For example, we have the father of uh, the Greece uh, heroine uh, Danae, the mother of Perseus, who um, is sitting in a tower because her father forced her to live there and Zeus comes and impregnates her with golden rain. So in this image, the tower actually becomes a womb or a, a female sexual organ. And we have something like Saint Barbara, who is also sitting in a tower uh, because she is trapped within it uh, by her father who doesn't want her to become a Christian. Um, yeah, the, for this, we can see uh, the rendering um, by Regula Elisabeth Fichte, a Swiss uh, kipper and Linamon expert in her mystical Linamon card, just to illustrate this idea of this woman sitting in the tower. In all these stories I just mentioned, uh, the woman is released at one point from the tower, sometimes uh, during a crisis, uh, and uh, she doesn't fare for some time very well afterwards, and sometimes in uh, due to positive, nice circumstances. To me, uh, it, uh, to me, this means that we all have a female heroine sitting inside our personal tower who needs to be released. And this is why I want you to draw your second card with your cards, um, which is about who or what is trapped inside your material tower right now. I will do this. Spinning wheel was the word I was looking for. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. If the tower can show us what feminine potential is trapped within you or me or in the situation we are right now, uh, then the star to me indicates what the release of the captured en energy feels like and can bring forth within our lives. Coming back to my original thoughts, the star is um, also 
a symbol of feminine sexual and erotic power and strength yet again. In fact, the star seems to be a continuation of the strength card, at least in the Rider Waite Smith. And the strength card, of course, is also about um, sexual issues. Perhaps if you could show us the two cards, please. Um, the perhaps both together. Thank you. Um, the star and the strength card are again connected through numerology. We have uh, number 17 with a star. So if, if we are adding up the digits, we come one plus seven is eight. So they belong together in the right away Smith deck for, for, for uh, definitely. And uh, if you look at the imagery, we have two women bent down uh, in a kind of uh, protective posture. One is dressed, the other is undressed. One is focused on herself and keeping her balance, and she's hidden behind the energetic lion. The other is totally open and releasing fluids into the water and onto the ground. The strength card is often seen as a card of sexual control. The lion's head is on the level of the woman's primary sexual organs, and she can open and close it as she wishes. Um, the star card, on the other hand, uh, is in need of no control anymore. The lady on the star, her fluids are flowing freely. So to me, these two cards in connection are very much about contracting and release not only in sexual <laughs> connotations, but also uh, within our lives, in whatever situations we find ourselves in. So I want you to draw now your third card, which is then, of course, about the releasing of this, what is trapped within your personal tower. So the next question would be, what is trapped within my, what, how can I release what is trapped within my tower? And I need something to drink for a second. So coming back to my um, perception of the tower and the star as being one card, and you can show it perhaps again. Um, I'm not uh, quite sure that they are about... Um, uh, no, sorry, I have to start again. <laughs> coming back to, to all, uh, after all what I was saying, coming back to the beginning of my talk, I myself am now quite sure that they are about uh, energies released within the union of masculine and feminine uh, union, uh, union and uh, climax after a strong tension has been built up and the strong tension built up would be in the card, the devil, which is also again about sexual issues. Um, the masculine release is shown as explosive and feels like tumbling down somewhere and a total loss of control. While the feminine release in the star is more silent and overflowing with a lot of depth uh, of which we are only seeing the surface. Actually, um, this is also indicated by the symbol of the lake or the well, for example, in a fairy tale like Frau Holle, where the lake, the well, is the entrance into the matriarchal realm and to the realm of the great goddess and is also often a symbol of the vagina. Um, actually, if you think this image further, a well is nothing but a tower going down instead of the tower going upwards. So again, these cards come together and they create space upwards and downwards. In summary, um, the star symbolizes a stage in the major arcana. Perhaps you show the star once more, in which um, the feminine power is ultimately released, appreciated, 
unsatisfied as an important ingredient for uniting masculine and female powers within us. This happens so that we can create more balance in the world and within ourselves. To me, the Star Lady has many names. She can be, as I mentioned, Rapunzel, Sleeping Beauty, Dana A, uh, but she can also be yourself. She is the released female, or should I say feminine energy within each and one of us. And this brings me to the last card I want you to draw, which is, this is how I feel after I have released what or who was trapped in my tower. I'm doing this now. <laughs> and uh, I'm basically done with my talk. I don't know how many people have watched. Uh, I know some have watched because there have been comments. And But I want to thank you all. And I'm sure Oe, who is allowed to say something too now, <laughs> because we thank are united too. now. <laughs> Our female and masculine energies are united now. Um, yeah, exactly. So um, we are finished now. I'm just going here through the uh, comments. Um, Um, I'm, I, Mary says that I have a good, uh, I have a great way at looking at things. Thank you, Mary. Uh, yeah, I like to think at uh, things differently. And uh, uh, yeah, this is amazing. Uh, amazing. My German, uh, my English is not amazing today, I have to say, <laughs> but I'm really nervous. Um, yes, I mean, I'm sure you can do the interpretation of the cards yourself. I will be looking at my interpretations in a moment. Are there any more questions I can ask, uh, answer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to hop in and just say, because there's quite a flurry of questions coming in now. Oh, is it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so um, Mary again said, wonderful. Can't wait to look at the cards I pulled. Love your session. Thank you both. Thank you. Uh, says, lovely to see you both. Thank you. It is so hard to hold up cards to the screen. So well done. <laughs> uh, who else? Kate, amazing. Thank you for this. Great talk. Such a refreshing way to read the cards. Uh, Kelly Ope says, this perspective was very eye-opening. Just wonderful. Thank you for a great presentation. Uh, lots of people saying great presentation. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Kate <laughs> said, what is the last cards question? Yes, the last cast question is, this is how I feel after I have released what or who was in the tower. So basically, this is the outcome. Okay. My opinion. Okay, I'm just bringing up a few more questions. We literally got uh, a couple more minutes. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see. Yeah. It's so refreshing to hear talk about our innate primal mature urge to connect and combust, internalize and externalize sexual energies. This has been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Ritesh says, Bundabar. Super. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Uh, Richard helped me a bit with uh, making the difference between male and female and masculine and feminine. <laughs> 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 Um, Joan says, I enjoyed this very much. I thought of the Crowley, uh, sorry, Crowley Strength card, which is Lust. And I'm going to listen to this again and pull cards from his deck. Thank you. Yeah, of course, we could talk about Crowley uh, with this a lot, but uh, I wanted to point out that I think Wade and Smith were thinking about this perhaps as well. Um, let's have a look. Um, Ben Vili says, amazing perspective. Uh, Joan says, this was new material and new concepts for me, and I'm very impressed. Thank you. <laughs> um, have we got any more questions before we wrap this up? Please put them in the chat, because we've literally just got a few minutes left. Yeah, perhaps while there are more questions, I just um, want to point out that uh, on Facebook, 
everybody who doesn't know this yet, I'm doing a lot of uh, live chats with people from Britain, America, wherever, in English, on the page of Tarot Verband. Uh, and uh, if you want to join them from time to time, it's always uh, lovely to have you all there. Last week I was pay, uh, speaking to Rachel, uh, Rachel Pollack. Next uh, week I'm going to speak to Steve Hounsom from uh, the OBOD. I hope I say this right, or is this the ODOB? OBOD. <laughs> um, and it's always always focused on tarot. So. Paul is gone. Hey, sorry, I, I just pop up. I'll let, I'll let you talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, Raymond said, could you repeat the four cards meanings, please? Yes, I was sure this was going to happen and I haven't prepared, but I will make it. Uh, um, the first card is, what is my Tower Star situation right now in times of Corona or on any other subject you're thinking about? The second card is uh, who or what is trapped inside my tower right now. The third card is how can I release my inner feminine powers uh, which have been trapped in this tower. And the final card is how do I feel after this release has happened? I will make a little handout of the reading. I haven't prepared this because um, it is work in progress still today. And I will um, send it out to anybody who wants to have it. Uh, you have uh, the homepage here on uh, the them um, on the video but also if you go to my um, card you can contact me via email i think uh one final question before we wrap up um was from anna says can i follow you on social media or uh, attend a workshop with you of course <laughs> I, I'm very happy about this. Um, I'm don't, not doing so many um, workshops in English right now, but actually I'm going to do this more and more because I'm now uh, a member of the WDO, the World Divination Association, and I have been practicing doing workshops in uh, English. I am on Facebook, yeah, Kirsten Buchholzer. I'm also on Instagram and Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> thank you to everyone's questions. And we will be back in five minutes for yes. our next talk. Have a great uh, day thank still. Thank you for helping. <laughs>